I see a pattern arise uh, when you look at the different women, these women contributed to the financial success of their families. They were able to put a Christmas present under the tree that might not be there otherwise. Today we're in um, my hometown, Ash Fork, Arizona, right here on Route 66. And when we moved up here in October of 1947, I was eight years old and um, my dad was new to the railroad, so he was not, he was unemployed most of the time. Dad was gonna have to provide food and we didn't have enough money for, uh, for meat. So dad wanted a hunting rifle and mom, she decided to get a job. She was a farm girl, so she had never worked, always been a housewife. She had three boisterous boys. She, she was in a family way when she was 16. So by the time she's about 22, I think she had had four children. And all of a sudden now she's working in a restaurant and had a job. And it was really neat because she put on a lot of makeup and she really looked great. <laughs> and she wore this fancy waitress dress. If you'd left LA and had gone through uh, Barstow and Needles and Kingman and Sligman, by the time you got to Ash Fork to eat, you're you ready to kill somebody. And uh, they didn't leave much, much for tips. She always in, in, her, in her apron pocket. It was, it was always full of change. And me, a nickel was a lot of money. <laughs> and I'd come in and bum a nickel or a dime off of her. And the depression was still kind of going on and after, after the war, uh, at least for us. When you walk downtown, you saw businesses. There was a post office, uh, a, a movie theater that had films four nights a week. And um, let's see, then there was a barber shop and a drug store. And uh, after the drugstore was the old opera house, which was now a cafe where my mother was a waitress uh, and one of her waitress gigs was there. Then there was a little alleyway and then there was another cafe and that was the Dew Drop In Cafe. The other hospitality place was, it was down by the railroad tracks. And that's where, um, that's where the, um, uh, the, let's just call it a hospitality for single girls. I delivered papers there too. <laughs> I had no idea, I was only 11 or 12 at the time. That was one of my other jobs, I was a paper boy. But sometime it, at night, the, the bus came from Flagstaff that brought the newspapers and they dumped them off at the Arizona bar. And so I'd wait down there till the bus came in. And if it snowed in Flagstaff, boy, on Route 66, it was just two lane road then. And I mean, those roads were really dangerous. They, uh, and these buses would be late, maybe two or three hours late. I imagine myself trudging through the snow on the bicycle and delivering papers and the, and the people all saying, oh, Marshall, we were so worried about you. We didn't think you'd make it. And they were asleep and didn't care. <laughs> Council buys park, scouts by lost girl, morning star. Except at the, uh, at the uh, little, the other hotel. And uh, it was all, the lights were always on and uh, she would bring, madam, the madam would bring me in and give me chocolate. Uh, I did not know until my mother told me one day, we were walking down the street and the madam had bright red hair. I said, hi, and, I, and she said, hi, Marshall, how are you? I think my mom thought I was a regular customer there or something. I, she said, how do you know her? <laughs> I said, oh, I was, uh, I'm the paper boy. I, I deliver papers there. 47 and 48 and 49, they had some of the most brutal winters in Arizona history. Dad was able to buy an army surplus tent. We slept in there with just blankets and no heating, nothing. And the next house we lived in here was the rock house. And um, it, it had plumbing, but the bathroom didn't work. My mom, she was salutatory in every class and um, real smart. And she had a hard life and she could have had so much. 